What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, one more time by popular request, we are working on our hip mobility. So we continue the yoga sequence. We begin with a full body, then follow by a shoulder mobility routine. And now you guys ask a hip mobility routine. If you have any other requests, please leave it in the comment section down below and we'll make sure to cover that. With that being said, as always, we're gonna be doing a combination of dynamic exercises with passive exercises, as well as doing some PNF work and some active mobility. So we are not only working on our flexibility and just getting just flexible for, like I said, an Instagram picture, but we are actually able to control that range of motion, controlling external rotation of, external rotation of the hip, internal rotation of the hip, flexion, extension. So we're gonna be moving through all those ranges of motion and making sure we are controlling those ranges of motion. With that being said, guys, what you're going to need for this practice is a couple of blocks, ideally the same height. If you don't have blocks like this, uh, a couple of books or something that you can use to elevate yourself, they are gonna come pretty, pretty handy to assist on some of the positions, especially if you are very tight. Uh, the blocks are gonna be a lifesaver for you. You're also going to need a, a strap. Now, this, I don't even think this is actual, an actual strap. So anything that is not a rubber band, so it basically has to be solid. A, a belt works perfectly, and we're gonna be doing it, using, uh, using it for assisting ourselves in some positions. Again, making it more accessible, especially if you are tight. So, couple blocks the strap and maybe get close to a wall or you can move to the wall at the end. We're gonna do a final relaxation at the wall. With that out of the way, guys, the winners from last video giveaway are going to be Bartek Kax Marek, Armegon Noise, Armedon Noise, and Rafael Herbeux. You guys just won three months for free as a premium membership to the SM Academy, full access to an entire library of courses, workout programs, individual moves, and now we just added a new search engine. So you have the move list, and now you're going to be able to search by category, by pull, push, legs, or core, by limbs, so if you want it unilateral, or if you want it bilateral, by contraction type, so it can be an eccentric movement, an isometric movement, it can be a passive a stretch, that way you're using the filters and you can find the movements that works for you and that way combine it and create your own workout. All the information is gonna be down in the description. If you wanna participate on the next video giveaway, make sure to comment within the first 60 minutes of this video and get a chance to win some SM free memberships. With that being said guys, I'll see you in your mat. All right guys, so let's begin. Put your props to the side or somewhere where they don't disturb you. You can be facing the top of your mat. I'm gonna be facing this camera so you can see better the angle of this exercise. I'm gonna begin in a seated position. Bring your heels forward, bend your heels, so lift your toes off the mat. Place your hands behind yourself and rotate towards your left. Now, once you rotate, I want you to adjust your feet so they are 90 degree, this position, and then bring it slightly backwards maybe, and find that 90, 90 position. Once you're here, place your hands behind your back and go towards the other side. So rotate, the left leg is going into internal rotation, the right leg is going to external rotation. Move to the other side. You can release the hands and work with your own strength to keep the chest as tall as possible without twisting but keeping those hips square moving with your breath and towards the right you can move at your own pace as long as you're focusing on your breathing and on the movement that you are doing it is your practice so you don't need to do it exactly as me left right last one move on towards the left and move on towards the right. Go back to center. Now, let's get into a squat position, low squat position. If you're struggling to get into this position, I would recommend to place something beneath your heels or just grab something that also helps a lot to really find the position and sink into your hips. Now, the squat, I'm gonna face now this, this way. 
First of all, find your squat and find some movement. Begin warming up into the hip, into the hips. The squat, the low squat, is a movement that if I close my legs, this is way harder when it comes to mobility because you require this lumbar flexion to actually be on this position. Now, when you open up, you also have the lumbar flexion, but you can emphasize the hips by lifting your chest up, using your elbows to get basically inside of your hips. So I want you to use your elbows to press to the outside of your knees and find some movement. Let me face back the camera. We're gonna begin with our hands in prayer. Lift your chest high, push your knees with your elbows. Take a deep inhale, exhale through the mouth and find some stillness. Close your eyes, if you will, and bring your attention inwards. Take this moment to see how you feel, how your body's feeling today, how's your mind feeling today, and how are your hips or your entire body? Do you feel tense today? Do you feel loose? Do you feel strong? Do you feel weak? However you feel, just accept that and watch it transform as you move through the practice. Allow yourself to be here present today and allow yourself to feel and to work with whatever position is suitable for you. There is no need to be perfect. There is no need to achieve anything. There is only one place to be and that is right here, right now, accepting it exactly as it is. Slowly open your eyes. Grab the, use the right hand to push the knee to the outside. Keeping the attention on your breathing the entire time. I think I shouldn't repeat that that often. You guys let me know. Push the right knee to the outside as much as you can, not so much. Then go to the inside, press it back, inside, adjust as you need to, move your body around. Ideally, you don't wanna twist that much, but you wanna really, really emphasize the opening of the hip. Let's go one more time towards the right. Now hold it for three, two, one, and release. So towards the left, left hand on the inside of your knee, right hand for balance, press it for one, two, moving with your breath, three, four, and five. Bring the elbows one more time to the inside, press the knees to the outside, Find some length, maybe adjust your feet a little bit wider. The wider you go on your stand, the more you're gonna emphasize the inner hips and less uh, lumbar flexion. Find some movement one more time. Last couple seconds on our squat. If by any time you need to rest because pain on the tibialis or something, then go ahead and do it. Now bring your hands behind. You're gonna be still on the squat, go into internal rotation with the right internal rotation with the left, internal, right, internal, left, right, left, a little bit faster now, right, left, right, left, hold, now see how far you can go into external rotation. From here, drop it down, doesn't have to touch the floor, if it touches the floor without you relaxing here, that means that you have pretty good open hips, so towards the left, now you can see, right, the difference between left, internal and external rotation, the same with the shoulders. We have, you're way stronger on internal rotation, right, than on external rotation, and the same happens to the hips. Find your squat. We tend to be, have way more range of motion on internal rotation than on external rotation for the way that we actually live our life. So it's good practice to pay attention to the external rotators as well as your glute, which is the main external retainer of your leg. That way you're creating a strength on those areas and not only mobility. I'm gonna be speaking about that throughout the practice, but just as a little uh, theory before we begin the true practice. Let's go to the top of the mat, standing up. Bring your hands to prayer. We're gonna begin with three pose to feel a little bit the body. So we're still warming up. I'm gonna face the camera so you guys can see a little bit better, but you can face the front of your camera. Now, three pose. You're gonna grab the left foot and you're gonna grab 
the heel of the foot and get it as high into your right leg as possible. <laughs> you shouldn't use a wall like I'm doing and get it as high as you can go. Now from there, try to release and work on opening the hips into external rotation and bring your hands to prayer. Keep your focus on one single point. Feel tall and just breathe. What I want you to do is focus your attention on two areas. The first one is creating as much external rotation as you possibly can by engaging the left glute and also feel your toes. There's an analogy in yoga that your feet are like roots, like plants, like the plants has roots towards the earth. That's how you should feel your feet. Your feet has like 26 something uh, little bones and your leg only has two bones. So you can imagine all the articulation that we have going on in our feet. I want you to feel that. Feel connected to the earth and breathe. If by any chance you need to leave the pose, feel free to do it. Option to raise your arms overhead. Bringing awareness to the body, bringing awareness to the hips. Then release. Now let's go towards the right. Bring the heel as high as you possibly can. Extend and rotate without twisting, keeping your hips square forward. Feel your toes, your left toes grabbing the mat in this case, or the floor depending. Bring your hearts to prayer. Maybe close your eyes, working a little bit more on perception or bringing your hands overhead. Feel your right glute working to externally rotate your leg. Feel your toes working, your left leg is also strong. And then slowly release. I'm gonna do one round of Sri Namaskara A to keep warming up. We're gonna go a little bit of a fast pace, so bear with me and do it the best that you can. So inhale, rise all the way up, look at your thumbs, and exhale, forward fall. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step or float to the back of your mat. Exhale, downward face. <laughs> Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Apologies for that. Find your downward facing dog, move side to side. Find some movement, find some space. Bring your hips up and back as much as you can. Spread your fingers wide, spread your toes wide. Feel the connection from your hands all the way up towards your hips and from your hips all the way down towards your toes. On the next inhale, bend your knees. You can jump, step or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale, fall. Inhale, rise all the way up, hands to touch, and exhale, hands by your heart center. I'm gonna go for Sri Namaskar B. Inhale, bend your knees, Ukatasana or chair pose, look at your thumbs, exhale, plant your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, float or step to the back of your mat. Inhale for upward facing dog. Exhale for downward facing dog. Long exhalation as you bring the right foot forward, then inhale for warrior one, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, long exhalation, right foot 45 degree angle, left foot in the middle of the hands, inhale for warrior one, exhale, plant your hands, lower down, chaturanga, inhale, for upward facing, and exhale for child's pose. Bring your knees wide to promote less roundiness on the upper back, lower back, and sinking into the hips. Create some length in your spine, bring your hands forward. Return to your breathing, return to your body. Observe how you feel after those little sequences that we, have, we just have done. And accept it exactly as you are. Slowly bring both knees together, transfer into plank pose. Bring both hands on plank pose slightly closer. About a hand distance apart from each other. 
from here, contract your core, bring it down. Now, the left leg, bring it forward to the outside of your left leg, lower down, then back. Bring it towards the right, lower down, and then back. Try to keep your hips as square as possible. We're gonna go for five on each side. Let's go, let's go left, now down, and lift the chest up, and back. Right, down, lift the chest up, and back. Left, back. Right, back. Left, try not to twist, only going as far as you can go without compensating with other parts of your body. Right. Now left and hold it there. I'm gonna do little pulses down. You can be in your fingertips if your hand doesn't reach or in this case, the blocks come pretty handy to just be right here supported. So whichever place you are, either hands, fingertips or your block, lift your hips, lower down for five pulses. So one, two, three, four, five. Do not forget to breathe now. Push the left knee with the left hand, opening a little bit more onto the left hip without twisting one more time, but keeping the hips square as you open more space and push down. Let's go for five pulses. So one, two, three, four, five. Now hold it, bring the knee back to center. I wanna release and relax into lizard lunge. Now lizard lunge, you can stay on your hands. You can place a block and release your forms, or you can get into full lizard lunge. What I don't want you to do is, you're here, not too flexible, and then you compensate by twisting. What I want you to do is find the way and the space in between your hip joint that you're able to sink down and be comfortable for five long breaths. If that is not comfortable or too comfortable, use some blocks or be on your hands. In whichever place you are, allow yourself to close your eyes and breathe. Both legs are slightly engaged. Your body is relaxed, but that doesn't mean loose or completely letting go. We want to let go on some parts and stay active on others. We mostly want to be relaxed in our breathing and the way we perform the poses and the way we move. And we want to be active in the muscles or the activation of the pose itself. So it's a balance between effort and ease. And in that balance is when we find freedom. Slowly come up. Bring both hands together like we were before, bring the foot back and bring the right towards the right. Let's go, little pulses down for five, four, three, two, one. Press it with the right hand to the outside, right knee. Let's go down for five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back to center and lower down into this or lunge. Slowly come all the way up, release the blocks if you have them near to you. Bring the foot back, get into plank pose. Let's go through vinyasa, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale for upward facing and exhale for downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, bring the knee to your nose, plant the foot, inhale for lunge. Hold the lunge, maybe add little pulses down, finding some space, adjusting your feet as you need to, keeping your hips as square as possible, and breathe. For three, two, one, lower the left leg, left hand down, inhale for a twist, exhale, plant the right hand on the mat, inhale for a twist. 
lower down. Now transfer into the Skandasana by rotating the right foot and lowering down. Now do not lower completely. Place your hands right here. Find your balance first. This foot is gonna be inverted first. And as we lower down, I want to do little pulses down five times. Five, four, three, two, one. Then allow your foot to rotate, your leg to externally rotate. Your ankle is in dorsiflexion facing you and allow yourself to sink down. Here we're targeting more the hamstrings. When we are here, we're focusing more on the hip. Now, I want you to be on this position, even though it's mostly on the hamstrings, but you should also feel it on your inner right hip. Now, use your hands to lean forward and find that space. If this is way too hard, you can place something right here, or you can even be on your toes as you work on this full position, which is not easy at all. So you can place your hands behind you as well. This is a little bit easier. And find some movement and work with the position to make it comfortably comfortable eventually. Now from here, I want you to use your hands for balance if you want to, and we're gonna rotate the left leg completely, not the foot, but the leg. Forward into internal rotation, and then out. We're gonna go for five of those, really mobilizing and distracting the hip joint. Again, it might be just a tiny micro movement, that is totally fine. As long as you feel it, because you're gonna feel it, that is more than enough. Let's go for five of those. Hands right here or in the floor. Let's go forward for one, two, three, four, and five. Now plant it into in inverted foot. Use your hands if you want to, if you need it for balance, or use your own strength to transfer to towards the left. Keep the foot in an inverted position. Sink down five pulses. Five, four, three, two, one. And slowly feel the rotation of your leg happening as you lower down. Find the space created and sink down into the position. Again, use your hands in front, on the back, whichever place you need it for balance. Also blocks, if you are like right here, work pretty handily to work on deepening the pose. Maybe not my, it might not be the full pose today, but as you do this routine over and over, as always, I guarantee that you're gonna feel amazingly open as you do it consistently. Now, let's rotate the right leg the same way that we did with the left. So bring it forward for one. As you can see, some micro movement. Two, it's really just feeling the femur rotating forward and then to the outside really getting that internal rotation and that external rotation of the leg. So one more time, in, out, last one, in and out. Now we're gonna move into Skandasana to the other side, very dynamically. I want you to go at your own pace. Obviously I'm gonna count it as I go, but try to move slow, move with your breath and only go as deep as you can go and trying to find the space in your hips for your own. As a demonstration, if I go here, I can go up and I can go down. I can turn right away or I can keep it like this. I want you to experiment with it. So let's begin on our left with our foot in dorsiflexion. You can use your hands or your own strength for balance or just if you are able to do it but you're struggling without the hands, use some fingers. Go towards the right. Allow your foot to rotate, lower down, find some space. Inhale as you go up. Exhale as you move to your side, rotate. Inhale as you go up, exhale. Maybe leave it like that and then rotate. Inhale, staying low, as slow as possible. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Now inhale to the middle and sink the hips down. Place your hands, your fingers facing back and open the hips. Rot side to side, towards the right, towards the left. Bring the fingers to the inside. Rotate the left shoulder, opening to the left hip. Inhale, exhale. All the time trying to sink down left, right a little bit more. Release both forearms into your legs. Rock side to side, 
find some space by yourself and literally till your pelvis so you can sink deeper and you don't have bone to bone issues and find some stillness for three breaths if you're able to release the hands and work on stability go ahead and do it hold it for three two one and use your hands set it down get into a low squat a little break a little shake to your left to your legs to your hands you might feel a lot of tension on your quad because that's a pretty intense movement so find your squat your low squat you can also rest on a seated position if your legs are way too tired right now or bring your hands into prayer and close your eyes and now see how you feel in comparison to the first squat not to judge but to observe and to appreciate the new room and the new space that you have created in your body slowly open your eyes turn your hands in front of you we're going to transition to a seated a standing forward fold Plant your hands Lift your hips up and back and stretch a little bit into the hamstrings. It's really hard to target the hips without targeting the hamstrings. I mean, obviously it's 100% possible, but they kind of work together and it is good to place it in, a, in the same session. So even though we're focusing on the hips, we're gonna be targeting our hamstrings as well and they are probably going to be sore tomorrow. <laughs> Lower down into the squat, take a deep inhale and exhale forward fall. If you cannot have your hands on the floor, have it on your shin. Be right here, create length in your spine. Lower down, inhale, and exhale, standing forward fall. An option to get into your arm balance and take advantage of the hip mobility that we just did, and the straddle press will come a lot easier doesn't have to do it you can stay on your squat on your standing power fall but if you have a wall or if you want to practice your handstand go ahead and get into your handstand maybe stay on a straddle to keep working on that hip mobility maybe close and whenever you're ready come back down we're gonna move now into one of my favorite positions which is not my favorite frog pose and if you have tight hips you know what I mean. <laughs> we're gonna be using a wall to uh, half our feet level and that way we don't have like one hip in front of the other hip. So place both foot, both feet <laughs> towards the wall. Space it at about wider than shoulder width or obviously as wide as you can go. Lower into your forms. Now, before lowering, rock forward and be in, in front of like your hips in front of your knees. And as you are lower and as you are down, once you're set up in the position, begin bringing the hips back. Just a micro movement and you should feel it already. Let's begin doing little rocks. I don't want you to hold it passively today. Let's do little rocks back. Moving with your breath. I know it sucks. <laughs> Unless you have super flexible hips, frog pose will always be a nightmare. <laughs> We're gonna be doing some PNF work. We're gonna squeeze our legs, our knees together, like if they wanna touch each other. So basically this motion, this motion. We're gonna contract for five seconds and then we're gonna relax for five to 10 seconds. We're gonna do that two times. So place your forms, find the position first, rock back, find the stretch. And when you feel the stretch, that is your place to be. We're gonna contract in three, two, one. Contract for five, four, three, two, one and relax allow yourself to sink down allow your hips to open breathe as naturally as you possibly can to basically tell your body that this position is safe that's why i don't want you guys to go too far too quickly because you will be doing the opposite let's go for the second round close your knees together three two one squeeze for five four three two one and release, allow it to open and sink down into the pose. Play around with your hips and your back, extend the back, posteriorly tilt slightly and see how that feels. 
move around. Your spine is also strictly connected to your hips. Everything is. But the way you move your spine will greatly affect the stretch that you're having on your hips. Slowly begin to move forward and slowly and control get out of the pose. Bring both feet together, bring both knees together, begin facing the mat. We're gonna get into butterfly before pigeon. It's another set of PNF and actually face this way. So get into a seated comfortable position. You've probably seen butterfly pose on many many disciplines yoga being one what we're gonna be doing is again a PNF work so we're gonna be squeezing our legs up so we're gonna be working and activating our abductors At the same time we're pressing with our forearms down that way we're gonna activate that muscle and then we're going to relax and lean forward and allow allow our body to open up again this is just a technique that facilitates a stretching by anatomic inhibition or reciprocal inhibition and it basically contracting the muscle that you're working is going to the golden tendon on, uh, organ is going to send signals to say that you should be relaxing and if you also work the opposite muscles it has the same effect so just to demonstrate that we're actually going to be doing both type of pnf the first one we're going to be pushing up and relaxing the second one we're going to be pushing down and relaxing and you're going to see which one feels better or which one feels better for you today in your body so bring the chest up nice and high. You can place something beneath to elevate your sit bones if this is too high, too hard. Place your hands on your knees. Push strongly up in three, two, one, and down. Three, two, one. Now relax. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fall, keeping your back as flat as possible. And whenever you feel that you can round, round, but only forward, not compressing. Now let's go to the other motion. Place your hands beneath your, or to the outside of your knees and press down as you are resisting the motion with your hands. So in three, two, one, push down, open, three, two, one, and relax. Allow yourself to relax. Grab a block or something, place it in your forehead so you can relax into the pose. Two blocks is fine, even if you are like right here, that is totally fine. Find a place where you can relax. I'm gonna be holding here for about three to five breaths. So try to be comfortable. Comfortably uncomfortable. Slowly come all the way up. Release the lock. If you're facing the mat, uh, keep facing the mat. If not, just turn around. We're gonna begin with the right leg. Place it at about 45 degree angle. Now, we're gonna go for pigeon pose. What I will recommend is begin with this leg in 45 degree angle, but place a block right beneath the right thigh. This is gonna reduce the amount of external rotation that we need. It's going to allow you to relax into the pose. We're going to be doing a passive stretch in this position. Nothing dynamic, nothing fancy. So I want you to relax. We're going to be relaxing for about 5 to 10 breaths. So 1 to 2 minutes around that. So find a position that you can relax. Ideally, you want to be completely straight. You shouldn't have any pain in your knee. If you do have pain in your knee, please back off and avoid this exercise. That is a compensation for lack of hip mobility. But there are other ways to get hip mobility without knee pain. So inhale your chest, and as you begin to round, find your position. Maybe you have the block, or maybe you're in full pigeon pose. Work with a position that you feel the stretch right into the outer hip, right outer hip, not in the knee, not anywhere else, but in your right glute and your right outer hip. Relax into the pose. You can use a block also to relax into that and breathe.
if you want to adjust you can tuck your toes behind send the hips back and sink deeper into the pose come out of the posture, release the block, place your hands, slowly come all the way up, use your hands, the strength of your arms to push it up, bring it back into plank pose, lower down chaturanga, a little vinyasa to keep the blood flow going, inhale for upward facing, exhale for downward facing dog, bring the left leg in the middle of the hands for pigeon pose, lower down Find your position, bring the right knee as back far as you can possibly go and relax into the pose. Close your eyes if you will, tune into your breath, tune into your body. Allow yourself to be present and to feel whatever you are meant to feel today. Slowly begin to come up, scoop the right foot forward, stand up in a seated position. We're gonna be laying down in our backs, relax and grab your strap for this one, relax into your back, extend the right leg in front, we're gonna keep working with our left, bring the left leg up as much as you can. Grab the strap or the belt or anything that you have, wrap it around your foot, maybe bend your leg to allow that to happen, <laughs> and strengthen the leg. If you don't my hamstring flexibility routine, you have done this one, use your strength of your hands to pull it towards you. As I see, we're doing uh, passive flexibility, but only after we have done a decent amount of active mobility and strength in that range of motion. Find the stretch, adjust as you need to. Also use, even though you're pulling with your hands, use your own strength of your leg to get even deeper into the pose. Now that is the hamstring. Now from here, we're gonna transfer into our hips, going to the outside, towards the right. As far as it can go, I don't want you to twist, but rather use your right hand to press the right hip towards the mat and only bring the leg as far to the right and up as you feel the stretch. Maybe you don't need the strap and you can do it with your own hand. And breathe, as always. Slowly come back to center. Release the strap, bend the left leg, bend also the right leg and put it to the outside of your shin. Bring the left hand in between, the right hand on the outside, and bring the leg towards you. So if pigeon pose was a struggle for you and you really had some pain in there, I would recommend to start with this position and work on opening this area of, of your hip. Because sometimes, even though I recommend a lot of active mobility and strength training within the mobility realm, it's also advisable to work on flexibility so you can access that range and then work on strengthening that range. What I am not a fan of is an excessive amount of flexibility work without adequate amount of mobility work. But at the beginning, if you cannot get pigeon pose, even though pigeon is a passive stretch, get into this position and hold it on a daily basis and open into the hip and then pigeon pose is gonna come way naturally and then you're going to be able to do active pigeon pose and other stuff. Slowly release. Extend the left leg to the top of the mat. Bring the right knee towards you. Strengthen the right leg. And grab the foot. 
either with your strap or with your hand. You can use both hands, you can be right here. Try not to go forward, but if you are right here, if your hamstring only allows to here, which for most people it only gets until 90 degree, grab the strap and work, work right here. Play around with flexing, pointing, different positions, external rotate the leg, internal rotate, see how it feels. Know your body it is the most important skill for us as movers. Now, open towards the right. I cannot go very far because of the wall. Maybe release the left hand and only use the right hand with your strap to open into the right hip. And breathe into the right hip. Literally, literally, feel like your breath is going to the muscles and ligaments and tendons that you are stretching. And the joint, of course. Slowly bring the foot back to center. Allow it to bend. Externally rotate the leg. I want you to first feel the movement without your hands. That's another good practice. You can work on flexibility, but first see how far you can go. This is as far as I can go. Now I know that if I push it, then I can get deeper. But now you know your maximum flexibility range and your maximum true mobility range. Right hand in the middle, left hand to the outside. Flex the right foot to protect the knee and bring it towards you. Feel the stretch on the right outer hip and the right glute. Slowly release, keep both knees towards you. Let's get into happy baby. So bring the soles of your feet, press it with your hands. Try to suck your belly to create some space between your belly and your thighs. And allow it to just relax in here. Close your eyes and visualize a place when you were a child. And you were happy. Not that you couldn't be happy right now. You probably are happy right now. We all can be happy right this second. But... Let's remember when we were genuine and when we didn't think that much, we just were being all the time. Slowly release both legs towards the ground. Give a little massage by rotating towards the left, rotate towards the right, left, right. Now we're gonna finish against the wall. As he said, maybe relaxing into a wall straddle, a passive stretch to really sink down and integrate the practice. So get your butt as close to the wall as possible. Open the legs up, open as much as you can. Land your heels on the wall and relax. And as you feel that your legs begin to open up a little more, then allow them to open up. Do not force the movement, but try to just relax into the position. Observe how you feel right now. Be proud for making it this far, because these practices are not easy. And especially if you are new to yoga or new to stretching in general, it tends to be pretty surprising how a 20, 30 or 40 minute routine can, can make you feel and how hard it can be. But the more we resist that, that pose, the, most, the more we resist that we don't wanna be here, the harder and the longer the practice becomes. Once we're fully immersed in the practice and we are feeling everything that comes with it, good or bad, is when the practice becomes blissful and enjoyable and it literally happens in a split of a second. Because when you are present, time flies by. If you have more space, allow them to open a little bit more. Contract your legs. 
slightly and then relax. See how that feels. Contract and relax. Slowly and with control, bring both legs together. Move to the to your back. You still on your back. Bring both. Actually, let's finish sitting down. <laughs> let's do a little twist as always. Let's be in a cross seated position. Regular twist, or if you want to get fancy, you can cross the right leg across, left leg on top. Inhale, right arm up, and twist. Any seated twist or lane twist if you wanted to, just to neutralize the spine and to finish the practice. Inhale back to center. Uncross your legs. Cross them one more time if they are crossed. Right leg goes on top. Left hand goes high. Inhale and exhale. Twist. Option to grab your thigh. And breathe. Looking at your right shoulder. And slowly come back to center. You can see it in a cross-legged position, or if you want to try Lotus Pose, you might be able to get it today for the first time, <laughs> if you did this routine entirely, or if you do this routine uh, four days in a row, I wouldn't recommend daily at the beginning, I recommend two or three times per week, but let's say you do it two or three times in one week, I guarantee that this pose is going to come, maybe not in one week, it depends on your starting point, but it'll come pretty easily since we're really working on the outer hip as well as the inner hip, but this position is not as hard as it seems if you really prioritize stretching the areas that you need to stretch. But once again, it's not about getting the pose, it's about feeling the entire journey and everything that comes with it. <laughs> Place your hands on top of your knees, find any mudra that you like, or simply hands open to receive Elongate your spine, not too much that you feel pressure, but just enough so you can breathe naturally and close your eyes. Release any tension that you might still be holding on to. Relax the face, the shoulders, the hips. Release the control of your breath and allow it to flow naturally, exactly as it wants to flow. Once again, make sure that you're feeling proud about yourself for making it this far, for taking the step to show up, which is the most important part, not only in your yoga practice, but in life. Life, the same as yoga, it is not about showing up perfectly and about trying to achieve anything. It's about simply showing up and being okay with the moment, with the situation, with your practice, with life, and with everything that comes in your yoga practice and everything that comes in your daily life. One more time, allow yourself to be here. Allow yourself to let go of whatever left sensation or bothering sensation you might be feeling. And relax, let it go. Allow it to go, allow it to be. As everything in life, whatever you might be going through right now, it is temporary and it will go away like everything does. Slowly open your eyes and thank you guys so so much for sharing this practice with me and for allowing me to share my own practice. May all beings be happy and free. Namaste.
and as always, I feel pretty weird when I do this, like namaste and then saying bye, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment down below, what else do you want to see on this channel, do you want to see more yoga classes, do you like the long format videos, do you want more shorter videos, you want me to go into calisthenics skills, we are reopening the studio this week, so we might be able to film uh, a lot of calisthenics uh, type of workouts, not so much yoga workouts, but whichever you guys ask for to us, we will make sure to do it. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And with that being said, I will see you all next week. Much love, guys.